Greetings Internet, greetings Damians. This is a video about rights and rights, uh, basically for most of my life I didn't pay too much attention to the idea of rights because I recognised that they were something that seemed to be only talked about in the context of politics and defined by people in politics and given or taken away and even as a small child I knew that if you look back in history you can see so many examples of tyrants basically claiming to have control over other people's lives and killing lots of people and you know all the things that we know are bad and problems for humanity they were doing this and claiming you know maybe the right to do it so we had the idea of for example the um a uh, kind of divine right to rule, whereby allegedly God had chosen certain people to rule over other people, which, as far as I'm concerned, is 100% untrue, but that was what they kind of claimed at the time, and lots of people died as a result of that. Uh, today we like to think that we've evolved a bit beyond that, even though we still have monarchy, which, you know, is very much in part of that imbalance um, that's been inherited, but... Uh, obviously we don't have monarchy everywhere and not all monarchs are the same and so on. It's all fairly complicated, all different kind of uh, examples of how this plays out around the world. But the short version really is that we still have a problem whereby some people think they have the right to rule other people. And we even have the idea of what's been called democracy. And often we're heavily sold on democracy as being this solution to balance amongst humans and... Um, obviously much better than monarchy and so on, but if you have been paying attention to my blogs and the work of other researchers, you'll know about, for example, Carol Quigley, uh, the Ivy League historian from the 1960s, who was famous at the time, who uh, was given access to the uh, history of certain secret societies going back a very long time, and they asked him to write a book for their own consumption, detailing their own history, and he actually published it. Um, I'm still not 100% sure how it happened, but he did publish it and then it was retracted a few months later. So we actually have the records showing names, families, money, amounts and so on um, of how democracy was set up to be fake, completely fake around the world. Um, basically, it was deliberately planned so that the world would consider that um, that it was a good thing and that it was in their own interest, but in reality, behind the scenes, it was completely rigged and... Um, always has been and always was just there to control the majority, um, to allow them and to allow a small minority to control the majority. So that's a slightly different subject to what I want to talk about here, but I do suggest you go back and look um, look that up. Some of my previous posts are worth looking at with regards to that. Um, but where I'm really going with this is that rights, in many people's minds, are kind of at this point associated with democracies or some other authoritative body on the planet that gets to decide what's right and what isn't in essence i mean that's really what rights are they are what is right that's what they're meant to be you know you, you're meant to in a sense have the right to breathe because you need to breathe to be alive and since the whole point of being human relies on us being alive therefore anything that we need to continue to be alive is right it's right for us to have that thing so we have a right to breathe. Uh, we don't normally hear people say that because it tends to be kind of uh, enshrined, let's say, under alleged laws which say that thou shalt not murder. You know, we won't murder people because obviously removing the ability to breathe would be tantamount to murder. Um, I think what I'm trying to put across here is that the key about rights is that they are literally what is right. And they've been, this has been masked and, and kind of obfuscated by certain people, I would say, over the years for their own personal power gain or just through ignorance. And so if we're looking to an outside authority to tell us what our rights are, oh, you have the right to um, food, but you don't have the right to a view, for example. If you have a house, there's no, you know, it's not, you don't have a right enshrined in any rules anywhere that, say, that says you have to be able to have a, an attractive view when you look out the window. So in other words, it's okay for people who live near you to do whatever they want on their land, and you know you can't really object just because you don't like the look of it. Um, this all gets fairly complicated because there's so many people living in such short, um, such compression in such uh, small spaces relatively. There's a lot of empty space on the planet and lots of people crammed together. The things that shouldn't really be a problem do become a problem. Um, 
you know, it shouldn't really be a problem that if somebody wants to use a Wi-Fi router in their house, uh, it shouldn't really become a health risk or a problem for people sleeping, in, uh, you know, in nearby houses. But when you have a, an apartment block with 100 people living in it, with lots of different routers in one place, then that does become a problem. So where do we draw the line? What's right? And I think this is where decentralization needs to be really um, understood and applied in our daily lives because centralization slows down change, basically. That's one of the problems with it. Um, it also means that edge cases or unusual cases, people in slightly different situations don't usually get um, respected or what they need. Uh, because they don't have the power in that system typically to actually um, cause the changes that they need to happen and there's too many other voices possibly sort of speaking out against them and they get drowned out. So even though in a, in a democratic situation, representative democratic situation as we have in Britain and most countries, uh, yeah, allegedly your sort of local representative is meant to be your voice in Parliament, in reality A, that rarely happens, rarely, rarely they really listen to people, and B, even if they do listen to people, there's too many people for them to listen to everyone and to, to represent everyone. It becomes a major challenge. So it's essential really that we um, have a means of empowering every single person so that every person knows who they are, what their rights are and what they can do. And there's actually a very simple way of doing this. It's so simple, it's it's why I'm making this video, really. Um, I mean, most of the subjects that I talk about, whether it be systems design, whether it be money, whether it be body health, whether it be food, whether it be environmental issues, all these different things, my position always starts from the same place, which is that balance solves all the problems. It's only imbalance that causes the problems that we're trying to deal with. So no matter how complicated the problems are, as long as we understand that we need to cause balance and then find out why we don't have balance and then do what we need to do to cause balance, then we won't have a problem anymore. Um, so <laughs> when it comes to um, defining balance, which is very important, it's very simple. It's simply balance is a situation where no part or aspect or individual is overpowering any other. So if you pause and think about that for a moment, overpowering. That's what causes it imbalance. So if one element, or let's say a person, is acting or behaving in a way whereby they are causing another to um, lose power or to effectively feel limited or unable to act in a way that they need to, then there's overpowering happening. And in our world we see this in very obvious ways and in very subtle ways. So, for example, in the South American region and lots of other places, we see examples of corporations uh, moving in, abusing people, even murdering people, and doing everything they can in an unhanded way to clear out indigenous people, um, take over the land, even destroy rainforests. I mean, literally, many of these corporations are in the process, literally, of killing everything on Earth. Um, it's not just an exaggerated hippie viewpoint, it's literally cellular biology, it's literally the chemistry of what they're doing. They are literally acting to remove what we call the lungs of the earth, the, the rainforest, the actual mechanism by which we get oxygen to breathe. Uh, and they're doing this in a way that has been highly documented to involve all manner of crimes against individuals who don't have a voice. And in the system of alleged fake democracy, um, these people don't really have access often to mechanisms to understand or use their rights. And often the rights that they really do have are not actually protected in law anyway. And really that's what I'm trying to talk about here, is that when we understand that rights are simply what is right, then it becomes much easier to understand what our rights are. Um, I've written some notes here just on, on the side here, which I'm going to read because typically my notes are a little bit better than what I just say in a flow of consciousness in a video. So. Um, so, so rights are simply what is right. It's sometimes claimed that rights are relative to whomever holds power over us, but this is a denial of personal power and actually a position that causes further abuse of rights. Rights are absolute and it makes no difference whether a government or dictator chooses to respect them or not, they exist nonetheless. I do not cease to need to breathe just because someone claims that they own the air. Pretty simple. What tends to put people in a position of even being able to claim that they can decide rights for others is that we've already denied our own power and given it to them, or they have surreptitiously taken it from us. 
The fact that some have been denied and power has been artificially centralised into authorities does not change what is right. Balance is needed, not conformity to reflections of self-denial. So what I'm saying there is that these power systems such as the fake democracies and other groups who uh, claim to have more power than us or even corporations who, who act as if there's nothing that can stop them because the courts are on their side and they have all this money. Although often we can be intimidated by them and think, well, you know, there's nothing we, even as a small group, can do to stop these people. In reality, they are just people and their power is not rightly theirs in most cases. It is generally power that has been taken from other people as a result of those people denying their own power. So the more that we continue to deny our own power in response to that reflection of denied power, the worse the problem gets. So the trick, in a way, is knowing how to stand up to this and how to redress the balance without getting steamrolled or hurt in the process. So there are numerous different ways of, of doing this, and we need to do probably all of them, um, ranging from studying the laws and these mechanisms, which, although we may not agree with, uh, you know, it's important to understand the logic being used in them so that we can rebut any points made that may be used to try to stop us um, from, from just doing what's right, for our own survival often. Uh, then there's also simply, more importantly, understanding who we are in the universe and the mechanisms that structure the universe and the fact that this is a free will planet and that you are meant to be able to express here your free will. So expressing free will means you have to respect balance. So it's okay for you to want to do something with free will, um, provided it doesn't overpower anyone else. You may not always be aware whether or not you're going to overpower someone else or not, but there are actually ways that you can attune to that information, um, which most people aren't doing, which actually involve your emotions. So typically we're quite underdeveloped and under aware of the power of our emotions and what their role is in our evolution. Um, intuition and emotional guidance can inform us when we are overpowering other people or many other things. So. I'm not going to go too deeply into that. That's a subject which I could talk about for a very long time. It's very sort of, um, it's a very d deep and far-reaching subject which takes a long time to cover. But um, in essence, the point I'm trying to get across, I guess, is that um, through understanding that we're here to express free will, we can strengthen our own will. And by noticing where we're denying our own will and sort of holding ourselves back and compromising and and, and thinking it's loving even to, to not get what we want, um, we can correct that and realise actually it's loving for us to get what we want. And actually we often need to get what we want. And more importantly, there are things we need which we don't even know we need. And that's really the key in this. Um, most people know that they need certain things and they think that there's a, you know maybe some sort of officially ordained rights that protect that. But they often find that when it really comes down to it, these rights don't protect them. And often they don't even cover what they really do need. Um, so, there are many examples in human history where systems have been created that are corrupt and that overpower people's free will and, uh, let's say, prevent them from getting what they need, whether it be food, water, medicine, plants, you name it, you know, things have been done and still are done today to stop people reaching these things they need. We will never correct that as long as we're denying our own will. That's the bottom line here. As long as you're holding yourself back through your belief systems, you're not going to be able to correct this situation. It's only ever going to get worse. And you're actually partially responsible for the situation. Every time that you prevent your emotional body from powerfully expressing and resonating and vibrating how you feel, which is a reflection of what you need, you feel in relation to what you need, every time you hold yourself back emotionally, you actually cripple yourself and actually weaken yourself and weaken everyone's ability to get what they need because we're all connected. Um, and what we see on the planet right now, this intimidating reflection of power structures that constantly try and tell us what to do and control us, that's really only a, a reflection of our own inner violence to ourselves that's taken place over eons, whereby we've tried to be nice and try to do the right thing and so on, but actually all we've really done typically is hinder ourselves by controlling our emotions and um, weakening ourselves and allowing these sort of predatory vampire type characters to pop up around us who uh, 
just seem to always have new rules for us that uh, you know deal with a threat of some kind that they've identified that obviously us lesser beings are responsible for and you know we need to like sheep be controlled and, and uh, you know we can't look after ourselves. Ironically in many cases we, ha we are in a position of not being able to look after ourselves but not because that's who we are it's because we have denied our own power. So denying, st denying our power is, is a big problem we need to really stop doing that um, and that starts in our own heart and it starts in our belief systems and clearing out our junk belief systems that hold us back and uh, freeing our emotions as well. Um, so I've written here, basically the theme of all of this is uh, we are natural beings and natural means as was given birth to in its essence. So the word um, natural, natir, French, means it's relating to birth basically. That's literally the word natural connects into in its root historically. Uh, it's right for naturally created beings to experience the naturally created environment without hindrance. While overpowering is the cause of real violation of rights, there are many ways this can take place that most of us are not fully conscious of. Uh, part of the cause of this lack of consciousness is also within the deliberate and or accidental loss of what is right. Consciousness itself is right if we desire life and survival. So in other words, we need to be conscious to survive and live. And so it's right for us to be conscious. If we're unconscious, we are wrong, in a sense, in that very basic logical sense. Um, so the more conscious we are of reality and what's going on, the easier it is for us to understand what's right and for us to get what's right as well. Um, so sleepwalking, not so great. Uh, taking steps to improve your nutrition, health and balance and so on so that your brain's firing all cylinders, uh, that's good. That's going to help you fix problems and prevent yourself from being overpowered. Um, and I don't think it's an accident that, you know, our food supply is so heavily polluted and, um, you know, organic food is so expensive and all these problems have been introduced that weaken us nutritionally uh, because basically it means we're, we're less conscious and less able to stand up for ourselves, which is exactly what um, the predatory people, let's say, who are hoarding power and resources on this planet want. It's, you know, they're not here to serve humanity in a glowing, lovely, evolutionary way, they basically just want power for themselves. I should also point out that it's not wrong to want power for yourself, and it's not wrong to be in service to yourself, because basically, some people have said that service to others is this sort of better option than service to self, but that doesn't really make any logical sense, because what you're basically then saying is you must be serving other people to be a good person, and not really serving yourself, you should be selfless. But you have needs that only you know. So that means that if you are serving yourself, then other people, you, some of your needs are never going to get met, basically. And then effectively you've, you've become a slave. You've become a slave to other people's needs, which makes no sense. It's the complete opposite of empowerment. So basically you need to serve yourself first before you can truly serve other people. There needs to be a balance. And, and again, that comes back to the very essence of what I've been saying, which is that balance is needed. And, and that means no overpowering, which means no overpowering yourself, which means you have to meet your own needs and, and serve yourself to some extent. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not unspiritual to serve yourself. It's necessary for your survival. Um, so I've put here uh, examples of being overpowered. Living peacefully in harmony with the earth, not taking too much from the land, and then having a large corporation fly in helicopters, dropping poison candy on your group, and then using government authority to forcibly eject you to build an industrial facility. This is not right since overpowering has taken place, and additionally the earth is poisoned as a result. So this is actually happening. I've actually seen uh, footage of this actually happening. I think it was German, some German corporation literally flew over a tribe really deep in the South American jungle and dropped poison sweets on them to try and kill them uh, with the intention of taking their land. And then this is... I mean, there's, it's just happening regularly, these kind of things. Um, what can they do in that situation? Well, it's the, kind of the same as uh, everyone else in every other situation. The different, slight difference is that um, people outside of the jungle have more of a direct contact with the, these corporations. So we all have a responsibility. You know, the, the, the forests in, in South America literally produce oxygen for us to live. So. If anybody is threatening those forests, we're all under threat. It's not just the people living in those forests. So it's everyone's responsibility to, to literally make it a priority to track these things and actually take steps to stop them from happening. So if you happen to live in a country where this corporation acts or is, for example, 
you need to take action to stop them somehow. Whatever it is, it's up to you. Your own will will guide you with what feels good for you. Um, as a bare minimum, I would suggest not giving them any money for any of the products they make. Um, the next example I've given here is more subtle. The first one was obvious. The second one, walking to visit friends and being overwhelmed by billboards with primary colours in a region where all natural life and plants and colour have been removed, such that your brain is involuntarily forced to look at adverts for products instead of a naturally harmonious environment. This unnatural experience is a form of overpowering when those in the area do not want it. Typically, those who have decided to place such billboards do not even live in the area. This is not right because overpowering has taken place and nature itself is being replaced with industrial and usually toxic and unnecessary products. So there's a numerous different reasons why the action of basically removing nature from a, a natural environment and replacing it with massive billboards is not right. Um, apart from the obvious environmental issues, it is literally overpowering people's subconscious and conscious mental processes. If, if they're just traveling in the area, minding their own business, they're now forced to look at your thoughts about what you should sell them and what they should buy, which is not probably what they really want in most cases. Um, so this is an overpowering, it's a form of overpowering. There's very little bit those people can do other than move away, but where are they going to move to? You, these marketers will just follow them and to the best of their ability put adverts there too. So basically, I mean, if you think about that, unless we have a way of actually stopping this kind of thing from happening and recognising that we have the right to um, a natural environment, let's say, then the only solution is for us to all move to a jungle somewhere, which is also under attack. So then literally we all have to become something along the lines of ecological uh, um, activists, which probably would be a good idea, but most people aren't willing to do that. They don't feel that they're ready to do that. They're not, you know, they like their creature comforts. They like basically supporting the industrialized world to some extent. So we kind of have a bit of a problem here, don't we? Um, I would suggest that the best thing people can do who don't want to move to the jungle is to actually understand the principles of balance and to actively engage in making sure that they're respected and understood by the people, uh, which means empowering yourself, but it also means in becoming enlightened as to the nature of balance and um, then going out and taking steps in the world to make sure that balance is respected, whether it be through government or the absence of government, whatever needs to be done. Um, whether it's through blockchain systems or whatever it is, there's a good chance the blockchain technology will actually allow us to resolve some of these issues because the more business moves onto blockchain, the more easy it will be for us to, in theory, um, have a say in what happens through governance protocols and so on. But again, it still all requires us to get involved and actually take steps to make this happen. And at the moment, most people just are too distracted by um, meaningless stuff on TV and all the stuff that these sort of power hierarchies are feeding them, intending to distract them from what's right. So, in other words, by buying into all this marketing and, and advertising from big corporations, you are being weakened and placed into a position of what's wrong and you are literally participating in your own self-destruction. Uh, I know that's quite heavy to take in, but that's the only logical conclusion I can reach after having studied this my whole life and worked in various industries and um, seen it from all different angles, from the top to the bottom, inside out. Uh, we need to radically change what we're doing. Um, so a couple of final points here. Someone wrote in one of the groups that I'm part of, um, do I have the right to make nuclear weapons? Uh, which is a fair question. Um, if people have the right to self-defense, then where do we draw the line? Why is it right to be able to defend yourself against people who have weapons with a weapon, um, but not right for you to you know, take that to the ultimate extreme and for you to have nuclear weapons? Well, I would say, basically speaking, in a pure sense, it's not really right for anyone to have weapons. Um, what's right is for us to all be balanced and harmonious so that we don't attack each other, therefore we don't need weapons. Um, and we can live from the food-bearing plants that we don't need weapons to, to use because they're there for us to eat. Um, as opposed to animals which really aren't there for us to eat, which therefore we need to go through this complex process of getting weapons and hunting them and all this stuff. Um, so on that basic level, 
we have a bit of a, well, we have an arms race, effectively, don't we? We have this power struggle, uh, which is not right in itself. So we have to go deeper. It's not just about the weapons. It's about the causes of us even thinking we need weapons in the first place. And, and within that means going inside of ourselves. And we will then individually find many things within us that are not right if we think that we need to be going around overpowering other people. Um, so the short answer to, is it right, you know, do you have the right to make a nuclear weapon based on the need for self-defense? I would say no one has the right to make a nuclear weapon. Nuclear weapons literally have no purpose other than intimidation and mass destruction. They could lead to the end of life everywhere. And if the purpose of life is to stay alive, one of them, then clearly nuclear weapons are anti-life. People who might claim that nuclear weapons are the only thing keeping us at some level of peace in the world, um, I think you should look a bit deeper into that logic because, first of all, we aren't completely at peace. Every country that doesn't have a nuclear weapon is likely to be attacked by countries you know, that do, which is what's happening. Um, and even if all the countries had nuclear weapons, uh, it wouldn't really be keeping us at peace because there would just be a lot more paranoia, a lot more fear, and you would probably just have a lot more covert military action happening trying to remove nuclear weapons or using other methods of trying to destabilise people, which is happening right now anyway. Uh, the solution is not for everyone to have more weapons. The solution is for us all to come to peace in our hearts and actually deeply understand who we are and ourselves and the planet so that we can have real balance. So therefore there is no threat, there is no deterrent, there is no defence, there is no offence. There's just people living in harmony. People seem to think that this is impossible, but I would suggest you need to look carefully at who marketed that idea to you. Um, what's their um, reward? What's their payoff for you thinking that? Um, considering that arms manufacturers are some of the biggest producers of uh, products on the planet and heavily involved in killing millions of people, uh, obviously they have no scruples and they will twist things around so that you think that you need them and that they're heroes as opposed to being enemies of humanity. Anybody who respects life and wants survival and realises that survival of the fittest is about survival of the most loving, not survival of the one with the biggest nuclear missile, uh, can understand that, I'm sure. Uh, it may take some shifting of perception for many people to integrate that, that realisation. However, I'm 100% confident that all logic shows that that is correct and I can happily answer any questions or sort of... Um, comments you might have on that and I have done it already many 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 times and I'm sure that this is in essence correct what I'm saying so I look forward to uh, any any comments and rebuttals you might have on that. Um, so the last thing I've written here is how do I gain power and claim rights? In the face of opposition it can be challenging to know what to do when our rights are being ignored. Primarily we need to increase personal power which means causing an imbalance enough that we can take outer action without being hurt. The key to understand is that you're not alone and that the underlying structure of the universe is such that you can gain your power back and use it to improve your situation if you know how. Start with the certainty that it's right that you're not overpowered and then explore what comes up in contrast to that. Perhaps you feel a fear that you're actually bad and should be overpowered. What is the belief that leads you to feel that? You can change these beliefs so that you can come into alignment with your real strong free version of self. So it comes back to what I was saying earlier in that we are the beginning of all change in essence and our own alignment internally determines the reflection we experience externally in the world and if you are, often often we think that if somebody has an, who appears weak then they'll be preyed on and, and abused by others but it's less about the appearance and more about the state of being. The appearance reflects the state of being so you don't have, there's no point in sort of going to the gym and, um, I don't know, wearing a military jacket or something like that to try and make yourself look strong. You actually have to be strong on the inside, and that's the beginning of being strong and solving these problems. So, hopefully, at the end of all of this, some of the issues regarding rights are clearer, and, and I'm going to probably point people back to this video when the subject comes up again. I, I like to have videos that address common, important topics, so I'd have to keep repeating myself as much as anything else, uh, which I do a lot, um, because the same topics tend to come up over and over and over and over again in certain forums. So, um, yeah, I look forward to the conversation that maybe this strikes up, and uh, any suggestions or solutions you might have for how to embody this idea of what truly is right 
in our society without reliance on centralization would be excellent. Um, I'm not really sure if a decentralized blockchain could be used to monitor rights in real time. It, it probably could be in some way. If we can, if we can have a blockchain that um, rewards us for exercising, then I'm sure we can also have one that somehow monitors when we're overpowered and uh, perhaps helps us in some way in relation to that. Ultimately, technology isn't the answer to this. And as people have pointed out, the technology we're using in smartphones and so on is typically overpowering lots of other people automatically. It's sending waves out that may be um, health issues, according to certain studies. And the minerals uh, used to produce the technology are often mined by child labor in Africa, possibly slave labor. So, you know, if we really saw the whole supply chain, we really saw what was happening all the way through all of our actions, um, we probably wouldn't be so vested in them. We probably wouldn't be so happy to get a new smartphone. Much like vegans, um, you know, people who uh, become aware of how slaughterhouses are and suddenly realize that they can't participate in that and become vegan. I think it would be fairly similar for technology as well, if people really understood what was involved in producing the technology that we're using. Um, we need to find the balance point, and, and, and it all comes down to our will and our desire. If people know that they need to improve these things and they have a strong will and desire to do that, then in theory the market should respond and things will improve. And you know, those who abuse children in Africa uh, for profit will no longer be welcome at the uh, deal-making process when it comes to corporations making new products. Uh, provided that we won't support the corporations who would do deals with them. So there are lots of people working on this kind of thing, um, but not enough, I would say. There's far too many people completely oblivious to it. So um, this is another very important subject, and it's right for us to pay attention to it. It's right for us to pay attention in general. So with that, thanks for paying attention, and um, I'll see you soon. Cheers.